Antrimum, who looked to be going at half pace, winning his opening ride. Oh! Away they go this time, and Gunderson is away. And so too, around the outside is Rawn. He gets squeezed out by the Pirates, but here he comes, and Craby up running. Gunderson is looking for him, and now Gunderson will push him up front and let him go and guard the inside and do the team riding job, but though Rawn was way out there, and Gunderson is virtually stopping the talk to him. Eric Gunderson is almost getting off and carrying him. The Pirates are up on the back wheel. They really can't afford to make any mistakes. Middle it's rather overcooked the corner. He's in third place. Last is Smith. And Eric Gunderson is really doing a wonderful piece of team riding here with Rawn, who looks a little bit shaky on the first couple of laps. He does drift out. And Gunderson is waiting for Just look at the lad on the inside here. Gunderson is looking over his shoulder, egging him on, almost uh, carrying him on his shoulders into the last lap. And again, a masterpiece of team riding has kept the whitewash, the complete clean sweep in prospect over the line. Five more points to Cradley. Well, Team Speedway is all about looking for your partner, and we saw a marvellous example of it there from Eric Gunderson, because he almost got off the bike and carried Peter Rawn on his shoulders. And Gunderson, the skipper, really doing a marvellous job there in heat number seven. What a little rider this one is. Terrific individualist and shows he can ride as a team man as well. Well, there's the score. Seven heats gone. Still the possibility of Cravely going through the card in maximum. 35 to pull seven. And we wonder when the pool management will do something to try and prevent the most ignominious record in the book going their way. By Eric Gunderson, during that heat, it looked as if you were stopping almost for Peter Rawn and talking to him, were you? That's right, because in this race, uh, we swapped start positions for Peter Rawn to try and get out in the dirt. And um, he trapped with me, you know, we got to the, down to the first turn and he sort of missed the turn a bit. So I had a look across, you know, and I, I made sure that he came round with me. I can show you this now. That's right, you see, um, I, I'm around the inside of him here, and then he, he picks up a bit of drive somewhere, I don't know, and then he sort of, he overshoots the turn a bit, and uh, nearly hits the safety fence, but safely, you know, um, I got him up, up uh, next to me, you know, and this is what it's all about. Team racing, you know. What were you saying to him? Well, come on, Peter, we got to do it. We don't want to slip away in this race, you know, because... Uh, we're on a, on a record. Uh, it, I mean, if we can win the 13 heats tonight, we've um, made a record because that's never been done before. It could have been, but there's a guy called Eric Gunderson dropped one point uh, three years ago. That's right. That was against Halifax down here, and uh, that was my uh, second year in British League, and uh, I just dropped that one point, you know, and I was very disappointed, you know. The, the rest of the lads in the team had maximums, you know. Are, they, are, are you really conscious of this now? Are you really going for this record now? Well, we might as well, you know. So um, we geared up for it, you know. We've the whole team realised yeah. it. Now. We're going for it. Let me see what happens. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Well, there are the heathen pairing, obviously impatient to get on with the action in heat number eight. And rather, as we suspected, the Pirates team management have brought in a tactical substitute, one of their big guns, to try and prevent the most unwanted record in the book. And it's going to be John Davis coming into the yellow and black helmet to replace... Eric Stenlin now, just for any non-followers of Speedway, a team, once there are six points in arrears, can bring in a tactical substitute, a star man, to replace an off-form team man, but they're going to use the star man as a tactical sub one. Davis again on the inside here, and he'll just be looking to split up and uh, put this record out of Cravey's reach. He's on the inside in yellow. Next to him, we have Jan... Peterson in blue, grid three has Vassilov Werner in white on the outside, Lance King unbeaten thus far. But Davis is the man who the Pirates are hoping will be their trump here and really stop the rot. Whereas the Heathens do seem all fired up to go for this maximum record. Let's watch Heat 8. An interesting uh, new goal for them and for us. Here we go, Heat 8. Oh, Davis has had a flyer and so too has King. So it's King coming around the outside of Davis, and it's Peterson goes inside in clever cornering by the Dane. King missed the corner completely, is back in last place. So now, oh, King's missed it again. And Lance King has lost an awful lot of ground on the first lap. 
In second place, it is Davis. In third place, it is Werner. And the Pirates, surely now, will try and team up and prevent Lance King coming through. This is lap two. Here comes King around the outside of Werner. And I think he might just get around him. Up the straight, Werner has blown him off. Again, King trying hard and almost running out of track. The battle is for the odd point. It looks like the Pirates are going to at least save a total whitewash because King now has lost a lot of ground. They're into the last lap. They're 337 metres. And he's having to work awfully hard to get past Rasper Werner. He's gone through him on the inside. Davis in second place is a long way clear. And it will need a miracle from King to get up on him. And over the line, Peterson, second place, Davis. Third place is King. And there goes the record. Uh, but, well, it was worth going for. Lance King, I'm sure, will be saying something very, very vulgar to himself because he rather made a hash of the first lap there. Well, <laughs> there's the scoreline. Fool have at last managed to split up the heathens. But that 39 points does mean that Cradley cannot lose, possibly. But it's still a cricket score there after eight heats. Lance King, you went? Oh, not, not really. You know, I didn't want to break our streak. And I don't know, it's just the way it happened that I wasn't too pleased with, you know, in the first turn. But Well, tell us what happened. Here it is. Well, I made a really good start, see, and uh, I thought I had him, but, you know, you see right here, he just took me up, and here's where it happened, you know. He just kept going straight until he hit me. You couldn't get a line there. No, and then, you know, then I came pretty close to the fence, or, you know, too close than I wanted to. And, uh, you know, it was just a struggle to come from behind. Well, you made a great effort, but you're not going to get back from there, are you? No, not really. Not when you come from that far behind in the first turn, you know. You, you might get one guy like I did, but you're not going to get both of them. I'll tell you what, at the start of this meeting, you didn't think, cracky, I'd be feeling terrible about breaking a record at this stage, did you? No, it's just uh, I was looking for a maximum tonight, and it just sort of ruined it, so I'm disappointed. Still a big win tonight, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's great for the team. Well, it isn't going to be an immaculate score sheet for the Heathens now, but of course they could still equal the top score, 64 points in British League Speedway, which they hold. But uh, Poole now determined to bring in as many tactical substitutes to get some respectability from the scoreline. Two in here, we'll look at the lineup. The inside, Alan Graham in blue. Next to him, Michael Lee coming in as a tactical substitute for Andy Campbell. Grid three has Phil Collins, who has looked masterful, it must be said, the young uh, Phil. He's in red, and on the outside, it is Kevin Smith, who comes in as a tactical sub for John Davis. So two tacticals here, as the Pirates desperately try and claw some kind of respectability into the scoreline. Lee and Graham, of course, is uh, Michael Lee. Had a fair old tussle the last time they met. Michael Lee, tall, lanky. Nice to see him back approaching his best, although we haven't really seen it tonight. But he has been very ill. In fact, the doctors warned him he might be out for eight weeks. That was only a fortnight ago. Tonsillitis was the problem. So here we go, heat nine. Inside Graham, next to him, Lee, grid three, Collins, outside Smith. That is the way they line up. 39-9 the score. And it's Graham who gets to the corner in front. Graham and Collins going around the outside of Michael Lee, and Lee has just got the legs to hold him off. So it's Collins. Now he's bursting around the outside of Michael Lee by the pit corner and Lee pushing and trying to take him out but Collins might just have the drop as they hit the bottom corner together and there wasn't much to choose between them the real battle for second place here as they disappear into the dust and Lee is still holding Collins out Graham up front, Phil Collins has gone outside now swinging inside as Michael Lee almost lost control there a bit of a better race this one again Collins hugging the curve around the inside Lee on the outside, way at the back there, Kevin Smith. And Phil Collins has ducked and dived and tried the inside and the outside. I think Lee is going to hold him out to move into the last lap. And then he locked together for second place and through goes Phil Collins. And Lee is holding on to him. They're absolutely shoulder to shoulder. And Collins it is. This is the battle for second place. Graham up front. Who gets the drop on the line? It was Lee. It looked like Lee just got back inside for second place, and that was the best race we've seen. There he was, a sporting competition for second place. Graham was a mile up front, and it looked like Lee might just have got about a tyre width over the line for second place. 